everybody. Welcome to this webinar from our NPS Now Lab. Uh, my name is Enrique Rodriguez, my colleague is Miguel Almanjer. We are both application engineers in Barcelona office, NPS Barcelona office, and we are going to explain NPS solutions for implementing what is our engine. Thank you for your time. So, um, uh, so the main topic will be uh, solutions, MPS solutions for automotive uh, 15 batch standard. Uh, with me, there is uh, Todd Toporski and Cecilia Yuan, uh, both field application engineers in uh, North America. Uh, so they can uh, help you if you have any question, uh, either uh, our team in Barcelona or the team in US can reply. Um, first, in the agenda uh, for today, we are going to go through the wireless power transfer standard. We will explain the main principles, main architectures. Then we will address the MPA9 transmitter reference design for higher power. And finally, we will show you a MPS reference design for MP MPA9 architecture. And finally, on the, on the webinar, it will be a live demonstration charging a Samsung mobile phone. So if we go for the wireless power transfer, uh, in the recent years, we have seen a steady increase in wireless power charging devices. It has been adopted by iPhone family from iPhone 8 and later on, also for Huawei, Samsung. So not only on phones, we can see other, other devices are going towards this wireless charging. Uh, the WPC, that is the consortium on wireless power, forecast almost 1, million, 1 billion of transmitter for 2026 and 2.5 billion of receivers with indeed its meaning devices, right? So it's a big opportunity for automotive and for other consumers. Uh, the wireless, the main principle for wireless power transfer is based on inductive coupling between transmitter and receiver, which requires that both coils are closely coupled to be able to transfer the energy. This indeed, uh, it's making that the power transfer efficiency and also distance is limited this because of this um, coupling of the inductors. If we go to the SHE standard, this is the standard defined for the wireless portion consortium, and uh, there are many companies belonging to this uh, consortium. Uh, they have defined two kinds of levels of power, the low level up to 15 watts. Uh, there is a basic profile that it's charging up to five watts, and then there is extended profile for low power that you can reach up to 15 watts. However, we have seen Apple, Samsung, and Xiaomi adopting their own protocols. So it's not so standardized. Uh, and then we have another medium level to, to be standardized to be able to charge in the future, maybe laptops or even kitchen devices. Uh, in terms of working methods, there is two uh, main working methods established by the uh, SHE standard. Uh, one, it's a moving switching frequency, especially for consumer and then a fixed frequency, especially for automotive applications. The standard also define a communication protocol between transmitter and receiver. Also fix a range of frequency from 87 kilohertz to 205 kilohertz. And in the last months, it has been released with the standard 1.2.4 that includes new features, especially regarding the communication. The SHE standard also defines different reference designs. These examples, for example, for five watts, uh, the analysis defines for a single coil or multiple coils. What is calling here as a position free because you have a larger area for charging your phone. Uh, for example, for A6, um, we say here it's mainly consumer uh, because the frequency range can be changed. So the frequency is not fixed and the duty cycle can be changed to regulate your output power. But what is fixed is the supply voltage to your hard bridge. Then we have other architectures like A13, in which it's aiming at more automotive designs. First, because it includes a EMC filter, what indeed will impact on your efficiency. But in this case, the frequency is fixed to 100 kilohertz or recommended, let's say, but fixed frequency and duty cycle is fixed. But what we change to regulate the output is the, is the rail voltage of the full bridge. If we go to another reference design, it's the MPA9. Uh, this we have seen it, it has been adopted for different OEM suppliers in automotive. Uh, as again, the switching frequency is fixed, the duty cycle is fixed, but here we have a, a, a full bridge to be able to deliver more power and more efficient uh, to the system. 
and we have to change the, the voltage rail to be able to regulate this output, the output power. Um, so we are going to see now for MPA9 a complete reference design and uh, what will be compliance with G and PMA uh, that will have a microcontroller uh, to be able to modulate and demodulate and switch the coils. And also um, it will be able to detect, for example, foreign gear object detection, right? So it's a complete solution uh, to, to enable wireless power transmitter. From the point of view of architecture, we can see different blocks. First of all, there's a digital back boost converter that will supply the DC rail and uh, that at the same time it's supplying the, the full bridge and the resonant tank of the wireless power. Uh, we see this full bridge uh, and then we have uh, let's say complementary um, power architecture that will supply five volts to the CAN drivers or the MOSFET drivers if needed, or 3.3 LGOs to supply the SHI wireless transmitter or the FC that it's included in the last version of the SHI protocol. So if you see uh, some reference design as example, you have here the discrete back boost, you have the current sensor, what is essential, for example, for detecting, detecting foreign air object detections, the full bridge, the Q detection, uh, to able to detect if there is any change on the Q of the resonant tank or the coil switches out. And so with some complementary devices like the CAN and link drivers, the NFC and the communications. Uh, MPS based on this design has proposed a two MPS IC, so to be able to implement the complete architecture with only two devices. Uh, one of them is the 4262, that it's a back boost and digital controllable, and then the 4280, that it's a front end especially designed for wireless power. Uh, the 4280 not only includes um, the full bridge and the current sensing, but also a back converter and LDO to be able to supply the rest of peripheral circuits. So uh, if you will look here in the previous reference design I show you, we are substituting, we are replacing the discrete back post converter for the 4260, and we are repaying many other parts of the circuit by over 4280. In terms of comparison in size, just comparing the full bridge uh, implementation with our implementation, right? it's even smaller, even we add current sense amplifier, even we add DC, DC and LDO. So our um, integration is much low, much higher than uh, current uh, market solutions. So if we go through a um, more list of advantages of our solution, as I said before, we have, a, of course, a lower boom cost, reduced PCB price, we we'll have this extra back, but also we we'll have the possibility to adjust the slew rate for EMI slew rate of the, of the full bridge. So uh, this also it fits better on automotive applications. So I'm going to describe now um, some, uh, some of the ICs, giving some specifications and also giving some uh, characteristic waveforms like efficiency we can get in dissipation. So uh, uh, coming from the previous uh, reference design, we have proposed this solution we implemented with the 4262 and the 4280, and then we have put in our reference design all the other circuits that are needed to implement it. Um, so uh, fitting on the MPA9 reference design. Uh, as here, you have um, some specifications on 4280. Uh, the first one is a full bridge, the part of full bridge. Uh, it can have a wide input from one volt to 36 volt input voltage with a really small on, small fed on resistance 21 milliohms and it stands up to 5 amps continuous output current. And then we have also the current sensing and uh, what it can be a common mode input also from 1 volt to 16 volt to 36 volts and a really small uh, offset and a high uh, a fixed gain to amplify the current. Uh, then uh, as a complementary circuit for power architecture we have a 36 pack buck converter that can uh, delivers up to 400 milliamps continuous output current and we also have an LDO to be able to supply five volts uh, either for CAN communications or other proposed. Uh, and finally the package it's QFN22 which makes uh, really small and fits on, on this wireless power applications. Then we have the 4262 that it's a hybrid back boost 
uh, it has a digital, it's fully digital programmable. Uh, it can deliver up to 36 volts at the output voltage. There is a selectable uh, frequency from 250 kilohertz to 600 kilohertz. And also it's possible to have a split spectrum, what that helps you to, to overpass the, uh, the, the EMI requirements for automotive. Uh, and as I say, you can configure all the protections, uh, maximum voltage and over temperature protections. So uh, also it's qualified for AES CPU 100. Uh, so both together it's over proposal. Here you have um, some efficiency measurements from the rail to the transmitter coil. Okay, as you can see, our solution uh, reached up to 95, above 95%. Of efficiency uh, comparing with other solutions in which as soon as the power is going down um, there is more uh, let's say it's dissipated power or not using power uh, so our solutions it's um, more stable on the complete range of power after a half we have some uh, efficiency including from the input voltage to the transmitter coils so uh, in this case we can say we are at around 90 90 percent a little lower when we increase the, the power. Uh, and if we consider the complete solution from input to output, we can reach about 70% of efficiency. But this will depend on many parameters. This is why we have not put it in the slide as type of coils, receiver alignment, separations, and receiver circuit, right? So if they use synchro rectifier or it's a passive one, it will have a, a big impact on the efficiency, so we prefer to limit to just overpass. Finally, uh, we have done some temperature measurements. Uh, this is working at 220 kilohertz and the MPQ 4262 switching at 420 kilohertz uh, uh, and output of 15 watts. As you can see here, the hot spot is on 4262 because it's the one who is um, doing the harsh our switching part, um, but given this, the increment is around 20 degrees, a little less. Uh, so uh, we think for applications, uh, usually on temperature ambient, that could be 100 degrees for automotive environment, could, could perfectly fit. Um, so I'm going to uh, leave you with Miguel. He will explain a little bit our PCB um, reference design, and we'll show a little bit how, for example, a Samsung phone is charging. So, okay, thank you. Um, so this is uh, the wireless charger designed for automotive application that we made at MPS. Here we can see a charger, and then we will proceed to put a mobile phone at the, uh, at the top of the coils. Uh, this, this, <clears throat> yes, this design is a very compact solution that uses the Qi MPA9 topology using the new uh, MPQ4280 IC, the full bridge, that we can see at the middle of the PCB. It has an integrated back. Here we can see the inductor, the supply by the DCDC. Uh, here we have the coils. Uh, this is the coil selection MOSFETs for selecting the coils, the MCU, and here we have the Canton silver. Uh, here we also can see the, the modulation circuitry for the communications. Right now, uh, here we can see at the oscilloscope, this is the, um, we can see in yellow, the resonance voltage between the coil and the resonance capacitors. Right now, uh, the charger is looking for a receiver on its coils. It can be seen at the form of uh, these pins. Uh, if we put, uh, we position the mobile phone in, in the coils, We can see that the we can see that the transfer uh, the transfer power uh, phase has begun, and the uh, mobile phone and the transmitter are communicating in order to set the input voltage of the full bridge uh, that is set by the uh, mobile phone. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, we could see that the voltage increased and then decreased. So this has been the demonstration. Now we can proceed to the Q&A. Uh,
Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, so now for those of you that are attending, if you have any questions, again, uh, at the bottom of the Zoom webinar interface, you'll see the Q&A button. Go ahead and pop that up and fire away any questions. So we'll wait a second for you to do that. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning, you know, we do have meeting rooms set up. So if you return to our main virtual electronica page, you can uh, have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with an engineer there. And we still have a full slate of additional sessions, demonstrations uh, moving forward all week. So check the schedule and find out any other ones that might be pertinent to you. Okay, I'm still waiting on questions. We'll give it about five more seconds. There's one. All right, so we got, what is the recommended number of coils? Well, uh, the recommended number of coils, it will depend on, on your design. Um, she is standard, uh, usually it recommends she switch for one coil, depending on, on the application, or either three, when you have to want to cover a more range, like you want your device to, to move. Uh, and that's kind of a standard. Uh, if customer wants to add more, it will be uh, his own to, to be able to meet she standard, right? But uh, one and three, it's the standard. So it, it's what she is recommended. Great, thank you very much. Any other questions? I still only am seeing just the one. Okay, not seeing any further. Oh, here it came at the last second. Uh, it's a pricing question. Um, how's our cost compare to others? Uh, uh, that, uh, that's uh, difficult to, to say. It could be more on the commercial side. Um, so it's better to talk with our uh, sales uh, team, depending on the region, uh, and contact directly to them. They can give better quotation on through or through some of the distributors. Okay, so. But for example, if you compare with a discrete one, right? Like we showed before, uh, we are able to, to put together in one AC many multiples part of the circuit. So in terms of cost will be uh, for sure much, much cheaper and less space, less space on the PCB. Okay, thanks, Enric. Uh, any other questions? All right, I don't see any other further questions coming in. So again, thank you for your time today and we hope to see you in further discussions throughout the week. Bye everyone. Bye.